wondered how your favorite guitar players seem to be able to effortlessly play double stops all over the fretboard and always know where they're at at all times and land on the right note when they need to. Stuff like this, right? Well, I'm going to show you how in this lesson right now. I've got a couple of little tricks that will make it really easy for you to be able to navigate the fretboard and play double stops all over the neck. So don't forget to grab the PDF as well as the backing track. The link for that is in the description below. Let's jump into this lesson. So the first thing you need to know is that a double stop is just two notes played at the same time, all right? The cool way to do it is to kind of hammer on, and that's what all these examples are going to be. I'm going to show you how to do it in familiar chord shapes so that you can decide where you want to play your double stops based on popular chord shapes that you already know, okay? That's gonna make it really easy. So we're gonna play them all off of a D major. So we're gonna start off playing these double stops off the D major chord in the open position, and then the D major that's in the C shape if you know your cage system. And then we're gonna come up here and play them off of the A shape of the D chord, all right? And then end up on the G shape of the D chord right here, okay? And then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna play them off of this D, which is our bar chord right here as well. So I'm going to show you how you can play these double stops and kind of visualize this all over the fretboard just off of chord shapes that you probably already know, okay? So let's take a look at the first position that we're talking about today. So we've got a D major chord here, right? We're strumming two notes at the same time. That's how we get the double stop sound, and the hammer-on just makes it cooler, right? So just like that. So what we're going to do is part of our D major chord, we're just going to hammer on and play the first two strings of the D major chord and hammer on to the third fret of that first string. You can add any kind of accent you want. You can do it more than I'm doing here. This is just an example to get you started. So, and then I'm gonna reach over to the next two notes of that D major chord, and I'm gonna hammer onto the fourth fret of the third string. Right, now I'm gonna be kind of like an A, so I'm kind of cheating getting outside of the D shape a little bit. I'm gonna bar the second fret, fourth and third string, and hammer onto the fourth fret, fourth string. Make sure that the notes underneath your hammer on or above your hammer on ring out. That means you got to play on the tips of your fingers to really make it kind of ring and sing and get that double stop sound that you're really looking for here. So we've got and then our last one out of the C shape of the D major chord, which is just this, right? Our C shape, we're just moving it up. If you know your cage system, and we're going to play our pinky on the fifth fret, fifth string and our index on the fourth string, second fret. And we're going to hammer our ring finger on to the fourth fret of the D string, all right? So we've got the first position. Now you can choose to play them in the most simple way. Or you can add as much mojo and extra stuff to it as you would like. But we got double stops, four of them. One, two, three, four, all in two chord shapes. We've got the D chord shape. We've got the D that's the C shape right here. So C, and you just move it up, and there's your D chord. All right, so there's our first spot that we're gonna do it. Now we've got a D at the fifth fret, right? Our D position that's the A shape, right? We're gonna come up here and we're gonna bar our index on the seventh fret, fourth, third, and second string. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna hammer on to the eighth fret, second string. Same notes. We're just doing it in a different spot. It's got a little different sound. Right, so you can get a little bit different movement here, all right? So we're gonna bar seven and seven on the G and the B right out of this D shape. And then we're gonna hammer on to the eighth fret second string or the B string. And then we're gonna move our index up and we're gonna bar seven and seven on the D and the G string and we're hammer on to the ninth fret seven, uh, D string. So, all right, and then we're gonna move it up. We're gonna bar seven and seven on the A and the D string and we're gonna hammer on to the ninth fret of that A string. Like that. So now right here, out of this position, one, two, three, and then we're gonna land on this kind of G shape if you know your cage, right? And we're gonna play our pinky on the tenth fret of the E string. We're gonna bar our index on the seventh fret of the A and hammer our ring finger on to the ninth fret of the A. And that finishes it. So right here you got just like this. So first one here's your second one so right away we did them off of the D shape here the D and the C shape and then we've got a D chord here and we're coming up here and using this A shape as our starting point for the next set of um, double stops 
All right, so now we're gonna come up to our full D major bar chord here, all right? Now we're gonna kind of switch it up a little bit, all right? So we're gonna play a little bit right here. We're gonna bar our index on the 10th fret um, E and the B string, and we're gonna hammer on our ring finger to the 12th fret of the B string. So we got just like that. So we're hammering on right there, and you gotta make sure that whatever finger's hammering on stays on the tip, right? So we can get that thing to, um, both strings to ring out like we want them to, right? So, and the right, so there's our first one, right out of this shape. So then we're gonna put our middle finger on the 12th fret of the D string and our index on the 11th fret of the G. And then we're gonna strum both of those, and we're gonna hammer our ring finger on to the 12th fret of the G. And go right back to it, so. And then we're gonna come up to the 12th fret and we're gonna bar the 12th fret of the A and the D string and hammer on to the 14th fret of the A. Like that. And then we're gonna come up and we're gonna bar 12 and 12 on the E and the A. And we're gonna finish by hammering our ring finger on to the 14th fret of the E string. So we've got. Just like this. So let's review how many spots do we have this in. We got it right here. One. Here's two. Here's three. So now you can choose to use these in any way you want, but hopefully that will help you visually see. Around the D, I've got one double stop, two double stops, three, four. So then we come up to the D here in the A shape bar chord. We bar our seventh fret. One, two, three, four again come up to the D bar chord that we all love and know, right? So then we're gonna hammer on here. One, two, three, four, all right? So when you put all this together, you can really, really see how much easier it is when you start to look at chord shapes when it comes to double stops. The double stops don't need to be a mystery. They just need to be explained to you in a way that you can understand. And for me, Seeing a chord shape and being able to play double stops around it makes it much easier for me to know if I'm on this chord, where can I play this double stop at, all right? So hopefully that helps. I'm gonna show you exactly how it'll sound, how I want you to practice this with the backing track, okay? Let's take a look at that. I hope you found this lesson to be helpful for you. My goal was to give you a quick win, something that you could immediately apply to your guitar today or this week. All right, so once you can get to where you can play those double stops over the backing track, like in the demonstration, start using your pentatonic scales and start doing like a little jam session with the track and incorporate pentatonics a little bit more sparsely than I may have in the video. And um, yeah, I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to get the PDF and the backing track, and I'll see you in the next video.